Hi folks, Harry Frank here with a couple quick tips on using null objects as emitter data versus light emitters as emitter data for trap code in particular. There's reasons you want to do one versus the other. And I've seen this on a number of forums and blog posts. In fact, there is a whole tutorial from uh, a great animator, Chris Kelly, uh, that covers linking particles to a null with particular. This is his preferred method. And like I said, I've seen this come up a number of times, and I wanted to pose both sides of the coin. Uh, I want to show you why you would want to do this and why you don't want to do this. In fact, there are situations where if you use null objects as emitters, uh, it simply will not work. Uh, so let's say I'm working with a scene here. I have an object just moving along a path, and it moves very far, but it does move very close to the camera. And I save the scene out. I've got an external compositing tag, and I save the, the scene for After Effects. Go into After Effects, and I import it. And what I would end up with is, well, I didn't render it, so I've just got a placeholder piece of media here, but I've got the same exact motion path here. And I've got my camera move as well that came through from Cinema 4D. So the logic is, well, I've already got this object here, and I can go into Particular under the Emitters section, Position X, Y, and Z, and simply link Position X, Y, and Z to the X, Y, and Z position of the sphere, rather than uh, link this sphere to a light emitter and, and do all that work. Just to show you how this would be done, let me delete those expressions. So I go into position X, Y, I'm gonna hold on Option or Alt in Windows, click on the stopwatch. We can actually just grab this pick whip and pick whip the position of that sphere for X and Y. And it's actually going to set up all the variables that we need uh, to just look at X, Y. And uh, for Z, do the same thing, Option or Alt click. And we're going to pick whip just the Z position right here, not X or Y or the position itself, but this Z right here. Notice how it highlights. And I let go, and now we're grabbing the Z position. So you'll notice these numbers align perfectly, and my emitter is now following the exact position of that sphere. And notice how far this sphere goes. It's in the hundreds of thousands of uh, pixels, but it does come very close to the camera. But you'll notice uh, we're not seeing any particles. And now I can go in here, and I can crank up the particles per second as much as I want. I can uh, go into the particle size and make it extremely huge. Uh, which it already is, uh, but you'll notice you're just not seeing any particles. The reason is, because we've made our emitter position expression-based, the visibility section is now a little bit confused. The visibility is the parameter that controls how far away from the camera position in relation to where it thinks the emitter is and it says, uh, well, beyond this point right here, we won't see any more particles. That's sort of like the vanishing point uh, out in, uh, in Z space. So this maxes out at 100,000 pixels off in the distance. So beyond 100,000 pixels, we won't see any particles. But inside 100,000 pixels from the camera to where the emitter is, we should see particles. But you'll notice in this case, we're not seeing anything. And this is because the visibility section is not expression aware kind of a bummer. So this is exactly why you would not want to use null objects. And I came across this issue where an animator had set up everything, uh, imported some stuff from Maya, and uh, at one point the particles just stopped. And no matter what he did, he couldn't get the particles to reappear. And after some poking around, I found that the visibility is just not expression aware. But there's, there's a very simple uh, fix for this. All we have to do is use a light emitter. Here's the exact same scene, but instead of using the sphere position and using expressions, I copied and pasted the position data of the sphere to a light called the emitter, and now everything works just fine. And I'll prove this to you. Let's go back to the null comp. Let's create a light. We need to call this emitter. Let's go into my position here. Rewind to the beginning. Copy and paste this to the emitter. Let's go into my uh, particular settings here. I'll hit EE, show my expressions, and I'm going to disable these two expressions. And I'll set the emitter type now to light. Now, as this light comes closer to the camera, 
and I've got an extremely large set of particles and a very high particles per second count. Let's turn this down to 1,000 particles per second and turn the size down to, let's say, 50. And now, with that exact same composition, we've got uh, visible particles. Now, if I go down to that visibility section, you can see if I turn this down, we will see those particles start to fade off in the distance based on that visibility section. But now it works because it's aware of where the emitter is because we're using a light emitter and Trapcode particular is designed to work specifically with light emitters rather than null objects linked with expressions. So this is one reason you would not want to use null objects. Um, now, if your movement is relatively small, you can probably get away with it. But if you start to move beyond uh, uh, 50 to 100,000 uh, units in any direction, you're going to start running into visibility issues. So is that to say you should never use null objects? Actually, there are reasons you would want to use null objects. Uh, here's another situation where we've got uh, a simple null, and I've moved it along a curved path, and I'm using that same method to connect the emitter position. Now, in particular, I've set up a box emitter that follows this null object. And we can see that the particles are moving along that null position. Great. Now, in the same uh, scene here, I've set up a light moving on the exact same path. And uh, I've set my light or my emitter type to be light. Now, what's the critical difference here? Well, you notice that when you use light emitters, they are more or less in a Gaussian distribution around where the light is. So in other words, they're more concentrated near the light and less concentrated away from the light. And there really isn't any way to change this. The only way to get around this is to jump to using a null object and use a box emitter. And that way the particles can be uh, emitted in a completely random area around where the null object is. And sometimes you absolutely do not want this Gaussian uh, style distribution, uh, and you do want random. So this is in a case where you actually would want to use null objects instead of uh, light emitters. So there you go. If you're using 3D scenes and importing your data, uh, just wanted to point out some reasons to use and to not use nulls or lights as emitters. I hope this has been helpful. My name's Harry. Thanks for watching.